Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome back to a Gen 2 in review. This week I'm going to be looking at a request from a user about installing the Lua Kit. The Lua Kit is a web kit that is used for a light, quick web browser. Um, there are a few things that I just did some lookups first off to look at the Lua Kit to see if I could find any information about it. Here's the Lua Kit README where it talks about that it's a fast and light simple to use micro browser framework extension by Lua using the WebKit web content engine and the GDK toolkit. For those who don't know what GDK is, that's the GNOME toolkit. So if you're a KDE person, you're using Qt and in GNOME or GNOME, depending on how you say it, you use the GDK or GNOME toolkit for your graphic interface. Now you'll see here that these are the requirements for GDK, or not GDK, I'm sorry, Lua Kit. And I'm not sure if that's Lua Kit or Luau Kit, but um, it's going to be using GDK2. It uses, of course, Lua 5.1. The file system LFS, which is the Lua file system, and libwebkit, libunique, and SQLite, which is a small version of a database application. So that's about all we're going to look at for right now. There was another quick start guide that I did find. If you just do a Google search, like I said, on Lua Kit, you are going to find the very first one here that pops up. And that's, of course, what I did to try to figure out some information about this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open up our Gen 2 test box, because I never like to install things that I'm not quite sure I'll use inside of my main Gen 2 system. So let's get this thing running for us. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, set it up so that it'll just show my main screen here with this. So one moment here while that boots up we will do that. Okay well I decided against that. I realized that I'd have to stop the video and restart it so it just look, took a look at that one box and decided that really wasn't worth doing that. So hopefully you guys can read this. I'll have it hopefully in a high enough resolution that everything looks good. So when you want to install something like this, of course you want to do an emerge dash, I always do AV for ask and verbose, Lua kit. We hit enter. It should start searching for it and find all of our dependencies. Now, maybe Lua web kit, but we'll find out here in one second because this is going to pop up. And you know what? I'm going to bring up my simple screen recorder here because there's no reason why you guys want to sit here and watch things just kind of run through. So I'm going to pause for another moment. Okay, we've got our dependencies that are listed. And it does look like this particular program has an extra keyword that's required so that we can install it. What it pretty much is telling us is that this program is still in testing and that if we want to be able to use it we need to mark it as OK by setting the keyword. Now I have accept keywords in my make.conf which means that it's going to ask me as long as I use the dash ask file dash a if I want to add this. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes for this particular system so that it will go ahead and do that and then of course I need to run etc update which will check to make sure see it says now portage.accept underscore keywords is needing to be edited if we look at that we will see that it's adding the tilde amd64 option to it and it's required by Lua Kit. So shift zz and say yes we want to replace that and it should be good to go. Now if we tell it to do an emerge AV Lua kit, 
it should say everything is good and ask us if we want to start compiling. Now after it brings up the dependencies here, which shouldn't take but a few moments, we'll kind of go over a few things that it talks about. Now most of this stuff you don't need to worry too much about with the dependencies. If we look right around here at these top ones here, the Aptex DocBook, uh, DocBook SGML, um, Lunspell, you know, a lot of those, Scroll Keeper, I'm not sure if Scroll Keeper is part of that or something. A lot of that stuff is just text files, dictionaries, things like that that it's going to incorporate into the kit. Of course, you've got your GDK files down here, which are your GNOME Toolkit. You've got your actual Luau or Lua uh, language that it needs to install. So, of course, it needs that so that the Lua kit can work. You also have the Lua file system and some programs that are used so that you can read that file system. Now, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and tell it, yes, we want to compile this and install it. And it's going to start grabbing all of the files and start compiling them. At this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and just pause because I'm sure you guys don't want to sit here and watch code compile. If I do run into an error with this, I will stop the video, or I will start the video, I should say, and show you the error. We'll figure it out and we'll move on. One thing I thought about while this is compiling is when you're setting up your Gen 2 system and you're going to be trying to determine your purpose for Gen 2, one thing you want to think about is the type of system you're going to be building. And while this compiles, I'm going to switch to a different screen. I'm going to go into here and I'm just going to go ahead and log in real quick as root because it doesn't really matter. And if I've talked about this in other videos, but you want to make sure your profile is set proper. So what you want to do is look to see what profile you're currently using. You do that with eselect, and what you want to do is type in eselect profile list, and that's going to tell you what your current profile options are and what it is currently set to. Now, I found that if I just used the default Linux AMD 64 13.0 and I wanted to install a desktop environment such as KDE or something else, I ran into a lot of use issues with use flags that needed to be installed or set up manually and once I set up that I wanted a desktop and I didn't choose no I didn't choose KDE because I actually put XFCE on this one so I just used a generic desktop once I set up that profile it made a world of difference on the use flags because that sets up a lot of default use flags that you're going to need that you don't have to worry about configuring for a later time now, the person who had requested this particular um, build for LuaKit had asked about dependencies. He had about 30 dependencies that needed to be installed. And that could be because the use flags for the profile might not be optimized for the use of that system. You know, for instance, right here, uh, you do have the option if you're a developer to put in developer. If you wanted to make sure there was no 32-bit, you could use the no multi-lib. You know, those sort of things are, are all there. And let's just go ahead and get back into here and check to see where we're at. Uh, just wanted to bring that up, that that really does help to make sure that you have the right profile. Okay, we're still compiling over here. So once you list it like that, you can then do eselect profile set and whatever number you want to set your profile to. In my case, three. I'm not going to do it right now because it's already set. Nothing really needs to be changed. But if you set it to three or to uh, eight, for instance, for developer, KDE, GNOME, etc. If you were using systemd or wanted to use systemd instead of initd, you know, and, and some of the other startup scripts, you could also do that. 
and it'll set up like I said all the proper use flags and and make it so things should install much easier well, I just wanted to bring that up while we were waiting on some of the compiling to get done also while this is compiling we're just about there we're up to 15 out of 20 packages I was just doing a quick search on Gen 2 to see if we could find something else out about it for Gen 2 and I also found this Gen 2 forums for the Lua kit and there is a post now this is kind of old this is going back to 2010 but it, sh it may still be good and it says if you need any support using or configuring the UA Lua kit drop by their R IRC channel IRC dot OFTC dot net pound Lua kits and if that's still good if anybody is trying to install it after they've got everything set up with Gen 2 and compiling it if that IRC channel is still good that might be a great resource to go to I'll try to remember to put that in the comment section when I upload this video so let's take a quick look to see how we're doing here it runs pretty quick and it does install pretty fast I think it's been less than right around mm, 8 to 10 minutes so far and we're already about 75 to 80 percent through looks like we're getting ready to pass another package and it has been zooming along so as soon as this is done yep, we're on 17 of 20 it looks like we're getting ready to start package 18 so I'm going to go ahead and pause it so we don't waste more time unless I think of something new to jabber about now I know a lot of you guys already know about emerge and the different tools that you can do but one of the questions that came along with would I please install the Lua kit and show how it gets installed was the fact that there were so many dependencies that they were concerned about or didn't really know what they meant so real quick if I go back into my setup here and go into the other just remember if you ever want to know about a package do us a, a dash s lowercase look up the package name and that will give you a brief description of what the package is and what it does for instance with Lua kit here it's saying fast small webkit GDK based micro browser extensible by Lua and if we were to look at this you know, if we wanted to know what WebKit GDK was for instance then we go in there do that again WebKit dash GDK now anything with WebKit GDK it's going to pull up and bring so there might be multiple like right here there's multiple options and you can see that this one down here 1.83 is what it's actually installing probably right now because the other two are masked and you can see that it says open source web browser engine so that's going to be the web browser engine that Lua kit is actually utilizing and any other small packages that you might have concerns about just use that dash s command search it and you can see what it's actually saying there's a lot of com programs out there I don't even know what they all do because they've got such strange interesting names that they don't always tell you just by the name of what its intention is if you still have problems there's always the good old Google search or whatever your favorite search engine is to try and find that particular package and see if there's something else out there that discusses it and that's what I found out when I didn't heard a Lua kit before and when they asked if I would install this in here and, and check it out and look for the dependencies that's how I did my research to know what to tell you guys so hopefully this is a helpful video although so far it's been very uneventful it's just about done with the compiling and we have not run into any more problems thus far so real quick if we go back to some of these others I don't need that because I hit an alt F2 earlier brought that up inside the using Lua kit area 
that I found from the GitHub. There is some information about the configuration files, where the definitions for action of the browser takes place. You know, those things are kind of beyond me. Theme for if we're going to change the fonts and colors, etc. All of this stuff is right here. Great place to kind of find it if you are going to try to use the Lua kit so that you know what you're wanting to look for to set it up and run it on your system. Okay, let's go back into that's not the right window. All right, still going. This should be one of the very last packages, so I'll pause it for a moment or two. These last couple packages are pretty big and still compiling. Uh, just a little tidbit, I was looking up what Lua means, and it is pronounced Lua, and it is Portuguese for moon. So just a little tidbit on there, that means it's considered the moon kit. Oh my, what a compile. As you can see by my timestamp down here, it's now 2140. I think we started that around 2016, 2017. Now what really took the biggest part was the web kit for GDK. That compiled for a little over an hour all by itself. And the rest of it took moments to do. No more than maybe 15 minutes or so for the rest of those packages that were there. As you can see we now have the Luau kit installed. There were no errors whatsoever during install so now I would direct you back to the Luau kit github spot where it talks about what you're supposed to do you know once you have this thing installed how to use it I guess down here Luau kit and the URI etc and once again also what I found out in the forums to remind you about going to the irc.oftc.net and I don't know if people call that hashtag or I just call it a pound so pound Luau kit or Lua kit I'm sorry I don't know why I want to call it a Luau it's not really a Luau it's a Lua and as I said too I looked up how you're supposed to pronounce that and it says right here that Lua it means moon in Portuguese so that's all I'm gonna say for now because I'm not quite sure how to use it after this is installed and I can't find my window again there we go okay so we have it now installed it's up to you to figure out what you wanted to do to use with it there were no issues the biggest thing is a lot of stuff with GDK the GNOME toolkit and some other small dependencies that it required if you had any questions further or there are specific packages that you were concerned about that I didn't cover please let me know in the comments and I will look at those and see what we can do and until next time if it's morning evening noon or night whatever you're having enjoy it Thank you for watching. Keep the comments coming. I will be, now that I have some vacation time right here before Christmas, I will definitely be looking at getting some tutorials for installing Gen 2. We will be starting from scratch. I will be going through the handbook. I promise you. Well, I don't like to promise. But I am going to try to promise that I will have a tutorial set up and uploaded before the new year. And what I will probably do is a very extensive, let's go through the handbook, learn it, talk about it, discuss it, and I will go through step by step as we go through. It's going to be a lengthy process. You might get bored, I don't know. But at the end of it, I will try to then do a quick install that just kind of shows you, boom, 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 there's what you do. You're good and done. But the big thing about Gen 2 is, if you want to know how Gen 2 and Linux works under the hood, get your hands dirty and greasy, then the Gen 2 handbook is the way to go, chapter by chapter, page by page, learn it, enjoy it, and we'll go from there. So thank you very much for watching, we'll talk to you all later, you have a good one, bye.